Hi fellows and welcome back to my Land Rover Defender channel. In the previous video we looked at the vital signs of the ECU, more specifically input signals and output signals that were waveform shaped or were kind of pulses, pulses that you cannot measure with a normal voltmeter and that's why we used an oscilloscope to check out the crankshaft positioning pulse and the pulses that were going to the injectors. Two very important vital signs of the ECU, two vital signs for the engine to run properly. So if you want to see on how all well that was done, then I recommend that you look on that video. In this video, we'll be looking at something different. We'll be looking at vital signs coming from different sensors. For instance, we'll be looking at the sensor which we call the MAF, which is the mass airflow uh, sensor which is located in between your air filter and your turbo intake. And here it is, this is the MAF. The other uh, sensor we'll be looking at is going to be the MAP, which is the manifold absolute pressure um, sensor, which is sitting at the intake manifold and it measures basically two things. It's going to measure the pressure in the intake manifold and it's going to measure the temperature at the intake uh, manifold. The two important parameters because it will tell us a lot about the functionality and the quality of the intercooler and the turbo pressure itself. And the ECU needs to know all that information to properly dose the amount of fuel into the injectors. We'll also be looking at the temperature of the uh, engine itself and we'll log all this uh, on the logger system. And to log all this, um, we'll need something that will log those signals over a long time. Now you can actually measure all the signals with a voltmeter, but those are instantaneous measurements and you don't see it over a longer time unless you keep your eye on it. And you can already do one measurement at the time unless you have four or five uh, voltmeters. Now on the market you can find these data loggers and this is a four channel data logger which is perfectly for capturing um, the information that is coming into the ECU. Now you're probably going to tell me now why Steve do you want to use a data logger and not using a diagnostics tool like the Nanocom and, and for those of you that know the, the Nanocom uh, it's a little diagnostics tool that you can plug into your ECU diagnostics plug and it will tell you all kind of readouts. It will tell you the temperature, it will tell you the absolute pressure of the engine uh, in, at the intake manifold, all those different things you can read out with this tool. Great tool by the way, not that expensive either. However, this tool has a little drawback. Because this tool communicates with the ECU over a serial connection, it relies on the information that the ECU has been calculating and is being seen as its input. Now what if the sensors are faulty, or the cabling is faulty, or even the circuitry at the input of the ECU that needs to process the signal from the sensors is faulty? Then this device won't tell you that. It, it, it might say that you have a sensor failure, but you won't know what it really is, what the failure is. And if the circuitry inside the ECU, which is processing the signals, is faulty or is having a strange offset, it's still going to show some figures here. It still will show a pressure, it will still show a, a temperature, but it won't be accurate. So the combination of a diagnostic tool like this and the long-term data logger, like this, which is really going to be checking the input signals on the ECU, gives you a far better diagnostics capability than anything else. So this is really something I really like, and, and this is only about 30 euros, but you will need a laptop with it, so you can actually then uh, collect all the data on the laptop and then graph it out in an Excel spreadsheet and even make graphs with it if you want. And it's really great because some of the sensors could have long-term uh, problems um, that are happening every so often. So you could drive for a long time and then nothing happens and all of a sudden you have a very short moment in time where there is a problem and then it disappears again. Now if you look it up then in the ECU history you will see that there was a fault at some moment in time on a sensor and then you know and then you put your logger up 
on that very specific uh, signal and then you log it and you drive the car and maybe you need to drive it for two hours or, or longer. It doesn't matter because all the data is stored anyway. This logger takes 100 samples a second and it can take up samples up to a day. Uh, much of it depends of course on the size of your hard disk on your laptop. But that's great to diagnose these sporadic long-term problems that you otherwise can never find. Now we'll be looking at the few signals uh, because I only have four channels on this device um, but there will be more videos we will be looking at the effect of the EGR valve on the turbo pressure, uh, on the temperature, uh, on the power levels. We'll do all that in, in another video which I will make because I can't do all the signals at the same time because you will be bored to that. So now let's get on with it and hook it all up and let's have a look on how it all works. We decided to measure four vital signs. The mass airflow, the intake manifold pressure, the intake manifold air temperature and the engine temperature. You could have chosen some others, but those are three or four very important uh, indicators for the ECU. And now we need to identify which pins they are actually on the ECU, because those sensors, as you can see on the Haynes manual or any other electrical diagram that you might have of your TD5, you can identify the different sensors, but there's a lot of wires on these sensors. So typically you always have a power supply sensor and a ground um, wire on that one. Those you're not interested in at this moment in time, you assume that the power is there and if you're not sure you can always measure between those pins that you have 12 volts uh, power supply on it. But we are really interested in the signaling wire and you need to identify the signaling wires on each of those um, sensors and you can do this by looking up the plug definition of the ECU. Uh, there are two plugs on it, a black one and a red one. So look at the right plug, the right pin which you can identify on the diagram and then you know what the signal is. The way you tap off the signal is by using these little test leads like the ones I have here. Very easy stuff to use and all you need to do is slide it along the cable that you are identified, slide it into the hole of the proper pin on the socket on the connector, be it the red one or the blank one, depending what you identified. And then the other side of it, you connect it to one of the clips, one of the channels uh, of the data collector, the data logger, and then you're ready to go. As soon as the data logger is connected to the laptop, you start it up and off you go. You can start measuring the effects, start logging it, storing it, and then look at it afterwards. So let's get going on it. So I already slided in all the test points into the connector with these test plugs. You just go along the wire and then you just slide it in like this and it will make contact. Uh, I actually color coded the wires identical to the one on the probe here. This is the data logger probe and the yellow one is in our case the manifold pressure and I wrote it down of course because you, otherwise I would have forgotten. That's it. Now we just hook them up. Um, the red one is our coolant temperature or the engine temperature, let's say. And there we go. Then the green cable is our inlet temperature. And then the blue one, which I need to find, which is laying over here, is our airflow measurement. So that's how we do this. And then finally, we still need the single ground, which is, oops, that's the wrong one. I need to connect the blue one. There we go. And then the single ground is this one right here. There we go. So now we're kind of ready uh, to crank up the engine. And we are monitoring with our data acquisition system, you know, the four channel data logger, which is hooked up to the laptop. And on the laptop, you see four channels. Now we show it as a digital voltmeter, but later we'll show it as a graph as well. And we will be monitoring the airflow, which is channel number one, 
the um, inlet temperature in the intake manifold, which is channel number two, with the manifold pressure, which is the pressure that the turbo is delivering on channel number three, and we will be lo looking at the engine temperature, which is on channel number four. Now the last channel, which is, which is the engine uh, temperature, is going to raise very slowly, so you won't see too much of a change on that one. So we are kind of ready now uh, to do the real test, and uh, you'll see that on a graph later on, um, how all well these sensors are behaving. I also added up the nanocom, uh, so we can do a double check on what the nanocom is seeing. Now, I mentioned before that the nanocom is a diagnostic tool and is actually reading out what the ECU tells it. Uh, it doesn't go into the individual signals as such, it's an interpretation of the CPU of those signals. Now, the way we do in this is we capture the real signals on the laptop, the real signals coming from the sensors and that is a good approach because this way you can make sure that the sensors are working properly. Now the assumption is of course that the sensors are being fed with 12 volts power supply and this uh, supply comes also from your ECU. So you might want to check that first if a sensor is not working or you have no input at all uh, you need to check that on the sensor that it actually has a power applied to it. So let's get on and do it. So let's start up the car and see what happens. So first we'll start up the, um, the tracker. Let's crank the engine. And immediately you can see that the curves are coming in. The four signals are being detected, which is a good sign. If one of the traces would have been missing, then we really would have had a problem uh, with the um, one of the sensors. So this looks quite good. So I'm going to increase now the throttle and we should see the, the MAF or the airflow curve peaking up. There we go, you can see the white line going up, that indicates that the airflow is now picking up. You can also see that the temperature goes up a bit in the intake manifold and you can also see as well that the pressure goes up. I will give it a bit more. Now you can see it climbs even more. This is the airflow, this is the turbo load. If I let it go, it all drops back down, the airflow drops down, and the turbo pressure is dropping back down. You can see this line, this is actually the uh, temperature in the intake manifold. That doesn't change too much, it changes a little bit, but not that much. The red line is actually the engine temperature, and that is going to climb up very, very slowly. Now, right now, the engine is still indicating cold. On the, on the dashboard, so that will take a little bit before that is going to be at its uh, higher temperature. So I'm going to give it a bit more um, throttle again, and, and you'll see that the signal of the MAF goes up immediately, followed by the, um, the turbo, which is now charging the intake manifold, and you see a slight increase in temperature uh, on the intake manifold. And that's quite normal because the turbo is actually charging uh, or low, compressing the air, and the air is getting a bit warmer. You can also see actually that the temperature curve is going down a bit because now you get more cooling than when the engine is running on idle. And this is how you can verify uh, how your sensors are working on the vehicle without having to rely on a diagnostics tool like the Nanocom, which is an interpretation of what the ECU is seeing. You actually see the variation here on the, um, the temperature on the, on the uh, cooling system. So I'm going to crank it up one more time because now the engine is getting to its temperature. Uh, this moment in time was the moment when the uh, thermostat actually opened up as I can tell on uh, the dial on the dashboard. So let's do that one more time. You could actually see how the turbo uh, load was charging up the manifold pressure, which is this curve right here. So this works pretty good. 
So now I'm going to turn off the engine and you'll see what happens with the signals. Immediately the airflow drops down and slowly after that you will see that the manifold pressure will drop down as well because there you go. Everything is now dropping down to zero because everything is now shut off. And this is how it should work guys. This is another display. Uh, it's the same as the graph but now you show in digital voltmeters. And uh, channel one again is the airflow, then channel number two is the inlet temperature, channel number three the manifold pressure, and channel four is the temperature of the engine. Uh, right now the engine is turned off, but as soon as we turn it on, you will see all the different readings, very similar to the graph I showed you. And immediately the, the levels come up, and if I throttle up, you'll see the changes. So that's it guys. Um, so folks in this video we captured some vital signs coming from the different sensors, the MAF and the MAP and we were checking on it if they react to changing engine conditions and they did it. And this is a very good test because we pick up these signals before they get into the ECU but really at the entrance point of the ECU. Now a diagnostics tool like Nanocom is a great tool and there's a lot of great tools and higher professional tools in the market which some of them are a bit pricey but they rely often on information that the EC is sending to it. You know they communicate over this serial bus to the diagnostics tool and yeah, if there's something wrong um, with the ECU inside, then you may not get the right data out. It, it doesn't always guarantee you that the sensors are good. The way we've done it indicated that the sensors were good because we actually only looked at the input into the ECU, so we do not rely on the ECU. Of course, if your ECU is having a short circuit inside on that specific uh, entry point of a signal, then it will be shorted out, but then you'll see it as well. So, thank you for viewing uh, my videos and I have more to come. Now, one thing that really annoys me while I was doing this test is I spotted oil on the cables. A very well known problem with a Land Rover Defender oil creeping up through the wiring harness and eventually ending up on the ECU and destroying it if you are not careful. So that's the next thing I will have to fix and I will have a video coming up on how to replace the wiring harness for the injectors on the ECU because that's where it's leaking. So guys, thanks you for viewing again and see you next time.